Welcome, everybody. I'd like to bring the meeting to order and ask that roll be called, please. Blue. Bozeman. Here. Disharoon. Here. Polshauser. Here. Humbles. Here. Bree. Here. Salwin. Here. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this time, we'll move on to the public participation. I'm sorry, at this time, we will have a public hearing to receive public comments on the proposal to sell not to exceed 8,320,000 general obligation school bonds, alternative revenue source, the bonds, for school facility purposes within the district, including altering, repairing, and equipping the existing Dunlap Valley Middle School facilities, including constructing and equipping additions thereto and improving the sites thereof, and explain that all persons desiring to be heard would have an opportunity to be present or oral testimony with respect thereto. At this time, I would like to ask for a motion to open the BINA hearing. I move to open the BINA hearing. Second. It's been moved by Abby Humble, seconded by Teresa Holzhauser. Is there a discussion? Roll call vote, please. Humbles? Aye. Holzhauser? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Disharoon? Aye. Reed? Aye. Sowen? Aye. Thank you. The reasons uh, for the proposed issuance of the bonds are to receive public comments on the proposal to sell not to exceed 8,320,000 general obligation school bonds, alternative revenue source, the bonds, for school facility purposes within the district, including altering, repairing, and equipping the existing Dunlap Valley Middle School facilities, including constructing and equipping additions thereto and improving the sites thereof, and explain that all persons desiring to be heard would have an opportunity to, be, to present written or oral testimony with respect thereto. Are there any comments from the board concerning the proposed issuance of the bonds? Okay. Are there any, uh, is there any written testimony concerning the proposed issuance of the bonds to be read into the record? Are there any public comments concerning the proposed issuance of the bonds? Okay. All persons desiring to be heard have been given an opportunity to present oral and written testimony with respect to the proposed issuance of the bonds. I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn the public hearing. I move to adjourn the INA hearing. Second. It's been moved by Teresa Holzhauser, seconded by John Bozeman. Is there discussion? Roll call vote, please. Holzhauser? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Blue? Aye. Disharoon? Aye. Humbles? Aye. Three? Aye. Samhain? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. This time we'll move on to the public participation portion of the meeting, and Mr. Merker will begin with the superintendent's report. Well, I have several items tonight. Uh, <clears throat> let's start off with a, uh, a sad item to share with you all. Uh, sad to share with you that Grace Sturhan passed away today. Uh, Grace worked for SEPCO as a classroom aide in our early childhood special education program for many years. Uh, I understand that she was at Banner for a period of time and most recently at Hickory Grove. Uh, Grace had worked during this school year but has not worked the past few months. Uh, let's all keep Grace's family and the rest of our pre-K team in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, Mr. Ednar sent a, a note to me today and his comments was he was heartbroken by this loss. Grace was truly an amazing person. Uh, if, could you maybe join me in a moment of silence in memory of Grace? Thank you. On to other business, we had uh, one Freedom of Information report this month, which was uh, interestingly a, a request from a group uh, in regards to school resource officers, wanting to know our agreement, how many we had, not sure the exact uh, reasoning for that, but I thought that was an interesting request. Um, <clears throat> my next item is just a, a quick thank you to our Board of Education. As all of you know, uh, our Board of Education has in involved these last couple of weeks with multiple meetings in regards to the hiring of our next superintendent. 
and the time and effort that is involved with this is uh, uh, taxing. I've been, been, of course, on the other side of the table interviewing in those kinds of activities, and I, I can understand that completely. I know several of you out here in the audience were also participating uh, in that process in our, our public part on Monday night. So let me just offer up my thanks to the board for the time and effort and work that you put in. Uh, it's a fairly unthankful job that you all have, but this is the most important piece in my view of work that the Board of Education does, is hiring a superintendent. So I, I certainly offer up my thank yous to that. My last item today, we will uh, ask each of our principals to step up to the microphone and introduce and talk a little bit about uh, staff members. We have staff members that apply annually or participate annually in a variety of grants. And we have uh, several of our schools rec here tonight to be recognized with staff members that are uh, grant recipients for this year. So uh, whoever wants to go first, jump up. <laughs> You all get a chance. High school did you last? Melissa and Amy, come on up here. Come on up. I've actually got three recipients, but only two are here tonight to be recognized. So um, we have Melissa Harrison and Amy Frederick. Um, Melissa first, she received the PNC grant for $384, and the purpose of that is to purchase four easy speak USB microphone recorders and a charging hub. So kind of a new technology that we can utilize in a little bit different way. Students will use these uh, micro or the easy speaks to conduct interviews, download the audio files, and use editing programs to create the pre different presentations. So a neat uh, angle we can use there. Next up, I have Amy Frederick. Amy received two, two grants, the Bank of Spear and the PNC grant, $300 each for a total of $600. Uh, she's going to use the money to purchase books for liturgies, literature circles uh, circles, and Spanish One, and these books are geared toward the reading and level interest of Spanish One students. Students of Spanish One, three AP, have been reading books of choice each Friday throughout second semester, and Spanish One will read a book uh, at the end of the semester project. So these are the two ladies here this evening, but also we have Ella Benefil, who has also received the PNC grant for $900. This is the second year in a row that Ellen received that grant. Uh, she uses it using that for an additional iPad, which the students will continue filming foreign language screen, uh, green screen projects for 3D animation. So a neat little project. So those are our three grant recipients for this year. Well, there it is. Um, we also had 
Uh, Deanna Bagner received a grant from the State Bank of Spear for $350, um, and that was to buy um, writing text, I'm sorry, mentor text to support writing across the curriculum, um, which is aligned to our, our school improvement goal. Um, Cheryl Wooden um, has received a grant every year that Hickory Grove has been open. She is responsible for our recycling program um, at Hickory Grove, and she received $420. Um, from Peoria County. Um, that money was used to purchase additional recycling totes, and they're also going to do something new this year where they um, cover the cost to send the students that volunteer in fifth grade for the green team on a field trip to the recycling center so they can see where everything goes. And then finally, um, our last grant is kind of combined between Wild Weight and Hickory Grove. Um, Sarah Burbank, a teacher at Wild Weight, um, but also um, at the start of the year was um, uh, doing our um, ESL coordinator position. She wrote a grant uh, for Hickory Grove um, in the amount of $320 to the State Bank of Spear, and that was to allow us to buy some uh, Arabic materials for our um, bilingual program. So we thank Sarah and, um, and everything that she does at Wild Awake, but also helping us uh, here at Hickory Grove. Janelle Niemeyer. Janelle Niemeyer is a kindergarten teacher at Ridgeview, and she actually wrote two grants this year. Uh, one was for an Illinois Bi uh, Biodiversity Field Trip Grant, um, and that was in the amount of $584, and that gives their, our kindergarten classes an opportunity on May 4th, right, uh, to go on a field trip that they wouldn't have otherwise had an opportunity to go on, so and that's taking place this spring. Uh, they're actually going to Wildlife Prairie Park, so... Um, the second grant is for a program, it's a math program called To Do Math, and this is something that uh, Mrs. Niemeyer researched on her own and took the initiative to seek out. Um, she's been really, really happy with it this year. It really provides a lot of opportunities for students to work independently at their own levels, uh, whether that's at an enriched level or at an intervention level. It provides her with an opportunity also to work with smaller groups of students more frequently. Um, and this year, uh, she was able to get this at a cost savings to the
and she was a part of that same program that Craig alluded to with uh, donors choose. She received over $600 uh, to purchase wobble stools and 30 mini microphones uh, for voice type of presentations such as uh, foot grip or seesaw. So both those students are students. Teachers were not here this evening. Uh, I do have Cindy James, who's also a first year teacher, and she was awarded $600 for PNC to implement NASA's best students curriculum for the eighth grade STEM. And I do want to read this to you. It's short, and she provided it to me. It's, it's pretty unique. It's not a wobble chair or math, but it's pretty cool. NASA's best activities guides are designed to teach students the engineering design process. The activities teach students about the fascination of man, of man returning to the moon, how we investigate the moon remotely, uh, the modes of transportation to and from the moon, and how humans will live and eventually work on the moon. Uh, this involves teamwork, a variety of authentic experiments and investigations. So that's pretty cool for our students and something that we're looking forward to seeing. So again, thank you to both our staff members and to Cindy on um, their efforts for uh,
four or five years, um, probably most of you may know that um, they work with the Panther Pals program and make fleece blankets for the Salvation Army Homeless Shelter, and it's just such an awesome experience. Um, the Panther Pals program in general is, um, but some of the things that they're able to do are really, really cool. So um, it's a benefit to all of our students at DMS, and, and I'm very appreciative of all the work that they've put into it. Um, this year, they actually wrote a grant uh, to get some more items for their sensory group as well. So. Outstanding. Uh, thank you very much to everyone that was involved. That ends my report. Okay. Thank you. And I would add my congratulations to all of you and thanks. At this time, we'll move on to public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board? If so, please raise your hand. Okay. Seeing none, no one, we will conclude the public participation portion of the meeting. The board will now move on to the information discussion items. School activity reports are available for the board's review. Are there any questions? Okay. Information regarding the high school random drug testing for the month of March is available for the board's review. Are there any questions? Information regarding the Dunlap High School band trip to Orlando, Florida in June 2019 is available for the board's review. Are there any questions? Okay. And now Mrs. Bowman will present information regarding the front row supplemental curriculum. I have two teachers actually joining me this evening, uh, both from Banner. Um, so they are here. I'll let them, ladies, want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Lee Bloomer, and I teach fifth grade at Banner. And I'm Hannah Dutton, and I teach fourth grade at Banner. Okay. So they have both been piloting front row education um, this year in their classrooms, as you are aware, and we added a little bit of information to the presentation, so I'm pulling it up. It may not quite match exactly what's in your board, but they just added a few additional slides, so I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. As a side note, over the weekend, we got an email that Front Row Education changed their name to Freckle Education, which threw us all for a loop, um, but they gave us the rationale. They talked about how um, not every student is the same, every student is unique and individual, so there was just a name change. So when they pull some screenshots up, you may see Freckle Education, it's the exact same thing, but just didn't want to throw anybody off with that. So really this year at the K-5 level, we've been revamping with all teachers on our curriculum council um, and in different groups and committees, our scope and sequence documents for English language arts and for math. Really, we've had several years of implementation with the Common Core, now the new Illinois Learning Standards, and so now that teachers are more familiar with those, we thought it's a good time to revamp, take a look at what we're doing, why we're doing what we're doing, and make sure we're truly meeting the needs of our students. So this program, this Freckle Education, would be very beneficial to have as a supplemental curriculum, supplemental resource to offer our students in grades two through five, and the paid version, which is what they're gonna talk about, really has some great offerings. 
Um, just as a side note in here, our current um, resource for ELA Literacy by Design was adopted back in 2006. So that is an older resource, not that our, there are not still many great components of that. There are level readers that teachers are utilizing. It is a wonderful resource, but as things continue to change and progress, we need to make sure that we are keeping up with the resources that we have available to our teachers to provide our students the best possible education. Um, so currently there are 819 students in grades 2 through 5 in the district that utilize the program. That's the pilot numbers and number of teachers using free programs. So we have a great number of teachers utilizing the free documents, but these ladies, like I said, are going to share the difference between that in a minute. Um, but Banner is piloting and they have 229 students using that paid version. So this is just our usage and front row, now Freckle, it's going to throw me for a loop for a while, so I apologize if I go back and forth between calling them the two, has some great statistics that they were able to share with us. So you can see here um, the building usage across all of our elementary districts. And really, when you take a look at where they're utilizing these, they even break down the reports for me by grade level, by teacher. And so the reason we are presenting grades two through five is that's the strongest number of users that fall into these categories. There might be a few outlier teachers in K or one that are utilizing it, but really it would be the best use of a resource for our teachers in grades two through five. Um, and this is just that grade level usage that you can see broken down there as well. So with that, I will turn it over to Hannah and Lee, and they can talk a little bit about some information for you. So both Lee and I have had the opportunity to use both the free and the paid version. We probably used the free version for about two years before, and then this year the opportunity to pilot the paid version. So Heather gave you all a handout that outlines some of the major differences between the free and the paid. But this slide kind of um, highlights which ones we think are going to be the most pertinent to share with you. And one of the ones that gave Heather all the information she just shared with you was the administrator dashboard. With the free version, there is no administrator dashboard. And with the paid version, principals, curriculum directors, they have access to real-time student data that they can monitor the growth of the students within their building and across the district. Um, one of the other things that we noticed was a huge difference was the teacher dashboard. With the free version, um, it is wonderful for student use, but teachers have limited access to the data that results from that student use. We could see data from a student session for maybe only a limited number of days. We couldn't go back and look at past data. So with the paid version, we can see all time data for the whole school year. We can look at um, sessions of student use. We can assign assignments and see individual student progress on those assignments rather than just whole class data on that assignment. We're able to form groups, share students with other teachers within the building, so resource teachers and Another huge component is the individualized adaptive practice, which is also available with the free version, but with the paid version, teachers have access to the reports from that individualized practice that the students are doing. We can monitor their levels, we can change their levels, and again, we can form intervention groups based on that data. And another great version, or another great benefit of the paid version is the unlimited access to inquiry-based lessons, which are cross-curricular lessons that focus on a math topic, but take learning beyond just what they're doing on their own. It can be a whole class resource to use. The great thing that I like about those inquiry-based lessons is those actually are not done on the computer. That is just truly a resource for teachers that then they can use to help in their lesson planning. So while this is a digital resource for our students at times, it also offers other resources for teachers that are not digital as well. Okay, so this is just an example of what, in the paid version, a teacher could pull up. This is one student, and throughout, throughout the whole year, we've looked at all their data, and they've taken, I mean, they've looked at many articles, so you read an article, and then you are able to focus what you want to see your child or your student working on in intervention groups or enrichment groups, however you want to um, analyze the data. So if you see a child really struggling with, like, claims and evidence, for example, here, you can assign topics, you can assign questions based on that, skill that they are struggling with. Um, it really helps teachers lesson plan because we know what our students are strong in so we can, you know, we can move maybe a little bit more quickly through those things. If they already are very strong in those categories, then we can focus on the things that they're struggling with. And we can make our enrichment groups based on that and um, intervention groups based on that as well. And this next one is a screenshot of full class data from a benchmark assessment that I was able to give. So 
right near the end of our numbers and base 10 unit, I gave this benchmark assessment on Front Row Ed, and this shows all the different standards within that domain. And I can click on the lowest performing one. So the whole class had an average of 63 on numbers and base 10 5. And the next slide will show you what it gives you access to. So it gives you more information on that standard. You can reassign practice on just that specific skill that was maybe the lowest for the whole class. You have access to printables. And then the next one shows um, video lessons and tutorials that you can assign to the students. And then even from then on, you can have access to the inquiry-based lessons that also go with that standard and skill. And those are things that you just, you get limited numbers with the free edition, but then, you know, they might hit their free three free lessons and then you're finished. So that's the challenge with that free version. So just a few extra things that we wanted to say is just like Heather was saying, it's really important to know that it's not just an internet-based program where the child is sitting in front of the computer. That does happen for their individual practice, but we really love how it is a resource bank. The inquiry-based lessons are great. They really give some higher level thinking, some deeper uh, inquiry skills. And since, we're, since we are reworking our curriculum maps for English and math, this fits so well with the standards. And so as a fifth grade team gets together, as a fourth grade team gets together, we can assign the same lessons, the same quizzes, the same assignments, and see how our students are doing across different buildings. Rather than having to come up with these, you know, and share them between teachers, we, we have them right there, and they're all standards-based. So if you know that you're teaching a particular standard, it's great that you can just pull up front row. You can print it out. You can teach it with your students. It's not just online. And then it makes those PLC discussions it all does. that much richer exactly. because they can compare the data. Mm -hmm. so. so with that, of course, there's the cost, <laughs> always, with any program. So the cost of this for all of our students based off of current numbers rolling up for this next year in grades two through five would be that $27,800. However, in looking at my technology curriculum line item, I am close to max out in that line item, but I have some other line items, say for example, if we were to take some of our um, professional practice or our, um, our line items where I pay teachers out of, there are some line items that just are not fully utilized to their capacity. So what I would like to suggest to the board is that we could rework where those allocations go in those line items so this wouldn't require any new dollars. It would just be um, reconstructing where we're allocating those dollars to be able to pay for this program and licenses for our students and teachers for this next school year. So with that, what questions do you have for us? How long did you say you've been using this? Three to four years, and then this is the first year that we've used the paid version. Okay. And have you monitored that over the... To we see have. I mean, you really can have. tell a difference because when, when you only have the free version, the problem is that the students can practice, and I'm sure that they're getting the benefits from that during intervention block. However, the teacher can't use any data to work with intervention groups or enrichment groups. So there's really, I mean, the benefits are there for the student, I'm sure, but it's very hard to monitor that and to also drive your, your instruction. It's very difficult to do. I also use those inquiry-based lessons for every standard that we teach. I use an inquiry-based lesson. It's a great um, resource that we use. There's only about three or four of them available in the free version. So you're really not able to use them for many standards at all. Another difference between the free and the paid version is the limits that they put on you on assignments that you can give mm -hmm. students. With math, at any given time now using the paid version, I'm assigning five different assignments at a time, one to this intervention group, one to this intervention group, and one to the whole class, but with the free version, you're only allowed one at a time. Sounds to me like you figured out how you're going to pay for it. You researched it. You people know how it works and, and think it's a benefit to the students. I, I think it sounds like we all have no reason to, to doubt you. So. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Heather, you can stay, right? I am going to stay. Yes. Okay, we'll just move right along to the next. Mrs. Bowman will present information regarding the middle school foreign language offerings. Okay, so I don't really have a presentation, but we did take the slide that was on the information item and blow it up so that everybody could see this. Let me see if I can get this to go away here. We don't want to update right now. Well, it's just going to have to be there. It doesn't like me. <laughs> so, either way. So the board had asked, you know, last year we had revamped our Explore programs, and the board had asked that we really re-evaluate and take a look at what we could do with foreign language, especially when we have our current fifth grade students who are now 
you know, in that fifth year of having Spanish from kindergarten all the way on, and how are we going to be able to progress and continue to offer them a foreign language offering? So we did have a committee of people meet back in December to first talk about scheduling, because I know that was a bit of a challenge last year when we presented some different options and it just wasn't going to work in the schedule. Um, revamping the current schedule at this point in time, especially when we met in December and there was a lot going on, it just wasn't feasible to do that for this next school year. Not that we may not take a look at that down the line, but to totally look at switching to a block schedule, which really the committee had interest in doing. It requires a lot of research. It requires professional development for teachers. It's not something that we would want to rush into as a district. So it's not that we would rule that out in the future, but it's just something that needs more time to truly formulate and evaluate. So with that, we wanted to see how could we fit that foreign language into what we currently have. So I did meet with our foreign language teachers, and this is what we came up with, and spoke with the middle school principals as well, that we would take our current sixth grade offering, which is currently just Spanish in Explore, but we would give those sixth grade students a choice between French and Spanish for that quarter. So every sixth grade student would still take a foreign language, but they already have that choice at sixth grade to determine which route, you know, maybe they've had Spanish all along and they want to continue that, or maybe they've had it and they want to try French for a quarter and see if that's the route that they want to go. So that would be for this next school year. We wouldn't do anything with seventh grade in the 18-19 school year, but then in the 1920 school year, we would replace the global studies course again with French or Spanish. So we would continue to move with that current fifth grade group, who next year would get the choice in sixth grade of the French or Spanish. That following year would also have the choice of French or Spanish in seventh grade. Um, we did talk about with the foreign language teachers, you may have to do some differentiation of courses. You know, if a student took Spanish in sixth grade and is going to take it again in seventh grade, they're going to need to possibly be in a different group than somebody who maybe decided to try French out in sixth grade but then decided, nope, I don't want to stick with French, I want to go back to Spanish. So we've talked about some of those obstacles, but then that would be the goal then to replace that global studies with that foreign language offering at seventh grade. This that way doesn't affect you know, the STEM, the art, those other specialized areas that our students like to be able to participate in and have a choice in, but still provides that foreign language throughout the EXPLORE program. So would it be for a quarter each year? Correct. And is that enough to keep it up? To maintain you know, your level of Fluency, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I don't know that it would 100% be enough, but my foreign language teachers, when I met with them, were comfortable with it. Other questions? And so the eighth grade would stay the same, uh, certain students who qualify? Correct. Yep, would nothing would change at the eighth grade okay. level. They still have their choice. In fact, I just had a meeting yesterday where we talked about that choice is going to go out to those students next week. Okay. That's the only, other, the only other challenge that comes with this right now is we do need to make sure we're able to give those sixth grade students that choice. Um, so if we're going to you know, wait and take action on this in May, it's going to be a pretty quick turnaround. So I don't know if the board would be comfortable with taking action on this tonight, or if it's something that you want to take and soak in, that is completely up to you, but I thought I would just throw that out there. Okay. You don't have that on the agenda, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And I find it just like it is. At least it's something, and I think it's the best you could really come up with right now. Right, under our current constraints. So we really tried to look at what, what we could do, still fitting with the schedule, but still okay. try and meet those needs as best we can. Thank you, and the teachers for Oh yeah, because I juggle. remember was it like two years ago? It wasn't. It was. It was tough work. It was rough. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for coming up with a solution for the students. Absolutely. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> okay. Information regard. Thank you, Heather. Absolutely. Information regarding the schedule for the 2018-19 regular board meeting dates is available for the board's review. Are there any questions? Information regarding the bond refunding for the 2009 series is available for the board's review. Are there any questions? Mr. Bambrick will present information regarding the electrical supply contract. Not uh, a whole lot to share other than the fact that uh, the district is currently under contract uh, for uh, gas and electrical uh, rates. 
through uh, Midwest Energy, and I did include in your uh, in your board packet what the savings in gas supplies were over the last uh, couple of years. And so we're, as I said, we're at the end of the life cycle for uh, this contract for the electrical, the energy, and uh, so we're going. We would, we're looking to go out for pricing on that. And just want to make sure you knew that, you're aware of it, and uh, look to come back in May uh, with uh, an action item. Okay. Just electrical then. Just electrical, yes. We're still under contract with the gas. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, information regarding the bids for custodial supplies is available for the board's review. Are there questions? Okay, information regarding the bids for office supplies is available for the board's review. Are there any questions? Information regarding the IASB resolutions process is available for the board's review. Are there any questions? Okay. Um, information regarding future agenda items is available for the board's review. Are there any new requests? I do have one. Okay. to Randy about it earlier today. So. Okay, item agenda requested. Request review of 2160 in practice of when to contact the attorney and removal of second attorney from district. I don't know, I can't read that word. It's just the district's list of List, of okay. And why the item should be placed, review current procedures, possible outcome, legal costs provide more scrutiny on when to contact the attorney. Um, is it a good topic? Yes, it affects the entire board. Is this item an item that will provide progress for the district? Yes, will address financial stewardship to district and the taxpayers. Okay, did you want to add anything? Uh, no, just I just wanted us to look at that policy. Uh, it's listed in the board policies, and I think that um, we should probably just be very um, aware of when when it's appropriate to contact the attorneys and when it's not and we also have a second attorney that's listed under our um, list of paid possible resources and uh, that's something new that has not been done in the past and I realize policy 2160 allows for that for boards to have a second attorney but uh, we've not done it in the past we've not needed it um, and I think if we were going to do that I'd like to go through a process of how we're going to uh, select that individual, just like we would do any other selection. There'd be a vetting process. We'd look at the per hour cost, and we'd make sure that that person was professional, efficient, and that we were selecting the right individual. So if we want to go through, go down that path, I suggest we do it through those proper channels. But um, I'd like to have that discussion at the next meeting and then move forward with the motion to remove the second attorney from our list of possible you know, resources. Okay, anybody have any comments or questions on that? Concerns? Okay, um, should we see if there are there, uh, how does everybody feel about adding that as an agenda item? Uh, you want to go around the table? I think we need. So I guess I'm okay with having him still there just because we've had questions that come up and we've had to still seek advice unless we're just going to you know, close it and no more questions. But it's hard to go to somebody else with all the information and catch them up to speed. We actually end up paying more money in the long run. Um, it actually, here it says with one or more attorneys. So until we can seal it, I guess I would maybe feel best that we just keep that agreement until I don't know what actually. I, I would I would disagree just because of the way we went about that. I think there was not a vetting process. I think it was done on a 4-3 vote. And I think we did not have the opportunity to do what we normally would do, which would be to interview, to ask for resources and suggestions from those who would know best, and to do an actual investigation as to who we are hiring and spending the taxpayers' money on. I think the rate is higher than the current attorney that we have listed, who's done a fine job. And I just see no reason that we would continue down that path. And again, if you want to have second counsel on hand, I'm okay with that. If the board decides to do that, but then that process should be vetted and that person should be selected through proper channels 
and we, that wasn't done the first time. So if we want to do that, I think we close this out, and then you start over the right way. I just we, think this isn't on the agenda tonight, so I think we should just make it a feature agenda item. Well, we need, so four people would have to agree yeah, to make no, it No, but I mean, I just, we're kind of vetting it right now. Okay, right. And the proposal's there, so I'm okay so, to have it as a feature agenda item. Okay, so we want to go around the table and say who's okay with that being added to the agenda. Uh, Cheryl? Yes, okay. absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, I guess I, I don't think it needs to be added to the agenda. Um, I, I'm not sure we've had a vetting process for our current attorney. Um, I feel like having a second attorney, we've had this second attorney before, our district has in the past. Um, he's done a great job for us in two different administrations. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's necessary. I see your point, and I see your point. So I think and until we can all like, speak about it and have a conversation, maybe we should next week or next month just to get it out on the table and, and over with so we don't we just put an end to that. So I would be okay, okay. with talking about it, really. Yeah, I'm not, not prepared to talk about it tonight, so I think we should bring it up. I'm okay, okay to bring it up next time. Okay. Okay, I'm okay with bringing it up next okay, time. Okay, so we will um, add that for next time. Okay. Okay, um, any other future agenda item requests? Okay, this will conclude the information discussion item segment of the meeting, and we'll move to the consent agenda. I'll ask if there are any clarifications or discussion items regarding the consent agenda. If there are no clarifications or discussion items, uh, I'll ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda as presented for April 18, 2018. I second. It's been moved by Abby Humble, seconded by Brian Zowen. Is there discussion? Roll call vote, please. Humbles? Aye. Zowen? Aye. Disharoon? Aye. Holzhauser? Aye. Ree? Aye. Luke? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Okay, motion carries. This will um, conclude the consent agenda section will move on to the action item segment of the meeting. The bill list, treasurer's report, third quarter financial report, and district investment report are included in the board packet for review by the board. Are there any questions? Okay, I'll ask for a motion to approve payment of the bills. I move to approve payment of the bills in the amount of $3,158,967.82 as presented. It's been moved by Brian Zown, seconded by, was that Teresa? Mm -hmm. Holzhauser, is there discussion? Roll call vote, please. Zowin? Aye. Holzhauser? Aye. Humbles? Aye. Reed? Aye. Blue? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Motion carries. This will conclude the action item segment of the meeting, and the board will now move into closed session. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn to closed session. I move to adjourn to closed session for the following purposes as stated at the Open Meeting Act. Disciplinary cases, appointment, employment, compensation, performance of specific employees of the public body, collective negotiation matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives, and discussion of minutes of meetings lawfully closed. Second. It's been moved by Abby Humble, seconded by uh, Cheryl Bluth. Is there a discussion? Roll call vote, please. Humble? Aye. Bluth? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Disharu? Aye. Holtelzer? Aye. Bree? Aye. Bowen? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, this time we're adjourned to closed session. Thank you all for attending. I'll ask for a motion to approve the human resources. Oh, I'll ask for a motion to approve the human resources consent agenda for 2017-18. I move to approve the human resources consent agenda for the 2017-18 school year as presented. Second. It's been moved by Beth Three, seconded by Abby Humbles. Is there discussion? Roll call vote, please. Three. Aye. Humbles. Aye. Aye. Blue? Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Tisharu? Aye. Holzhauser? Aye. Motion carries. I'll ask for a motion to approve the Human Resources Consent Agenda for 2018-19. I move to approve the Human Resources Consent Agenda for the 2018-19 school year as presented. Second. It's been moved by Beth Reese, seconded by Don Bozeman. Is there discussion? Roll call vote, please. Three. Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Blue? Aye. Tisharu? Aye. Holzhauser? Aye. Humbles? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I'll ask for a motion to approve the closed session minutes. Somebody needs to read that, their dates. Can you read it? Got me. As presented.
in regular session of the board meeting March 21, 2018, the special med ed meetings of April 11, 2018, April 12, 2018, April 16, 2018. Second. It's been moved by Abby Humble, seconded by Teresa Holzhauser. Is there discussion? Roll call vote, please. Humble. Aye. Holzhauser. Aye. Bozeman. Aye. Dishero. Aye. Bree. Aye. Sawin. Aye. And Blue. Aye. Motion carries. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. It's been moved by Cheryl Booth, seconded by Abby Humbles. Is there a discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned.